Off the record with Chris Mack, how exciting is that? Extremely exciting, Kevin. First ever. I mean, we start off with a bang. All right, Chris, let's start off here. If Chris Mack wasn't head coach at Xavier, he'd be? Unemployed. Um, I'd hope to be a uh, maybe a fishing guide somewhere in Montana, but I don't know if my wife would go, so it'd be a lot different life than I have right now. When did you realize that coaching was your destiny? Um, I think pretty early on, you know, when I got done playing, I had the opportunity to coach uh, at Macaulay High School to help out, you know, where my sister was going to school. And, you know, just, just fell in love with teaching the game that, that I grew up playing. And any time I think as you become an adult, you can still be a part of the team. You know, we all have these great childhood memories when we uh, played you know, Little League or soccer. Um, but that, that would probably be it the first time I was able to be a coach, uh, a JV coach at Macaulay High School. I know how important family is to you. So tell me, how has becoming a father changed you as a coach over the last eight, nine years? Well, I think, I think it's, uh, it's definitely changed me in recruiting. You know, before, you know, you always, I always, um, you know, talk to the student athlete or the mom and dad just from perspective of, hey, when I get to coach your son, you know, this is, this is what, what, what will happen. Uh, this is how we're going to try to develop him. But when you have kids and then you realize, you know, the people on the other side of the desk when they're going through the recruiting process, uh, you know, you sort of put, you know, your parent uh, hat on, you sort of put your dad hat on, you can really get a different perspective of this is what they're looking for for their child. And uh, I think that's how it's really changed me the most is, is in the recruiting process when I'm talking to parents uh, and their kids. Down one. You have one last possession for the right to go to the Final Four. It's a tough question. What former or current Muskie would you have take that shot? Wow, there, there have been a lot of um, big-time shot guys here at Xavier over the years, you know, but whether it's Byron Larkin, I think we got a kid, J.P. McCuro, who's not, not afraid of anything. But uh, I'm going to go with Lenny Brown. I mean, anybody that can, you know, do what he did against the number one team in the country uh, at their place. You know, Lenny probably has the signature shot in Xavier history, so uh, why not make it two of them? Most embarrassing moment as a coach at any level? At any level. <laughs> there are a lot of them. You know, unfortunately, I don't get embarrassed too easily. Um, but I got to say, probably the most embarrassing moment was in, in my third year as a head coach here at Xavier. And, you know, of course, uh, you know, the fight had happened and, and um, we were at Fordham and our team was just, a, you know, in a lull, you know, basketball wasn't fun. So I was, I never do this, but I was trying to inspire the guys. So as guys were warming up to practice, I jumped in layup lines, you know, started doing some reverse layups and they're going, oh, every, every, every shot. And so I dunk one, you know, and ah, you know, and then. I go to dunk a second one and try to do a reverse, and uh, my knee gives out, and I tear my patella tendon. And, you know, a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily equate that to be embarrassing, more, more painful, which it was, trust me when I tell you. But it was pretty embarrassing laying there at Baruch College on my back. My team is ready to practice, and I have to go off to the emergency room uh, on a Friday night in New York City, which, by the way, when I finally was able to figure out like what, what I just did, where I'm at. I, I, I don't want to say I woke up, but a guy next to me was handcuffed to his hospital bed. So the things you see in New York City on a Friday night in an emergency room, uh, that was pretty embarrassing. All right, so go ahead and tell me now um, your greatest accomplishment. Well, hopefully um, it's yet to come. You know, we, uh, we've had some great moments at Xavier, uh, probably just becoming you know, the head coach. You know, you get in this quote-unquote business, um, you know, like, like anybody, you're hungry. You know, you have aspirations to become a head coach. And for me to be able to do it at my alma mater, uh, where I wore the uniform, um, that, was, that was a heck of an accomplishment that I always remember. And when Mike Babinski offered me the job, uh, being able to get in my car afterwards um, and let out a few screams, I mean, it was, um, it was exhilarating. All right, now, other than family, Tell me the one thing you can't, you can't live without. The one thing I can't live without, 
I would probably say Diet Mountain Dew. Um, I, I hope they really don't come out with some studies because I'd have a real issue. On a good week, I could probably put back 50 or 60 of those things. Okay, best advice ever given to you? Um, Coach Prosser was always a fan of, if you can't be on time, be early. And I never, I've never forgotten that. You know, anything we do, there's time involved, whether it's practice, whether it's planning, running an organization, you've got to be prompt. You know, you have to be on time. And, and uh, then besides that, I would say, and I, you know, I know it comes from the Bible, but, um, you know, you reap what you sow. And I'm a big believer in, you know, the, the, the work that you put in is, is what you're going to get out of it. You know, you can't expect to be a good player. You can't expect to be a good coach, a good program, if you're not willing to work. I know your mother and father had a huge impact on your life. Other than them, who's been the biggest influence in your life and why? Well, I think when you start talking about influences, um, you know, in, in what I do in my profession, uh, the, the two biggest influences by far would be, would be Coach Prosser and then Coach Miller. And each of them for their, for their own unique reasons. You know, Coach, because as, as he rose in the profession and became, you know, an ACC champion, um, he was always as good to the president uh, as he was to the maintenance crew. I mean, he just was a, was a man of the people. And I, I just, it was so impressive to be around him every single day. He knew everybody's name, whether they worked in the cafeteria, whether they worked in the, um, you know, athletic department as a secretary. He was just great with people. And then I, I learned so much uh, from Sean during my time, and I put that on record a million times. He just really knew uh, what he was doing on the floor, uh, how to develop players, how to run an organization. Uh, offensively and defensively, he taught me so, so much. Uh, but those two guys, at least in my profession, would probably be guys that I would say are the biggest influence on me. Give me one thing we don't know about Chris Mack. I don't know. I just got all these different, you know, weird interests. I, for, for some reason, I'm not a business guy, but I love watching Shark Tank. You know, like I could watch that thing over and over. Um, you know, I'm also a, a hell of a foosball player, as, as you're very well aware. I think I've smashed you several times, Kevin. All right, this, I, I, this is probably my serious question of all. Okay. Seriously, what is a blue blob? You want to know the serious answer? You know, a long time ago when the Musketeer was first a mascot and they, they made these mascots, kids were afraid of, of the mascot. And they decided to have a, a fan-friendly mascot and they just sort of formed this blue blob. It looked like Cookie Monster a little bit. Couldn't tell you exactly what it is, whether it's a male, female. But I will tell you that being the head coach at Xavier has, has its privileges. I can get into the equipment closet get the blue bob outfit, which I did one fall for my daughters. And I showed up at our front door, rang the doorbell, and my oldest answered the door, and I was in the blue blob costume. And when I say she lost her mind, went hysterical and ran up the stairs and was scared to death, um, that is completely accurate. It was bad. All right, you ready for a little rapid fire? Sure. Good questions, I'm good ready. answers. You ready? I'm ready. Ginger or Marianne? Ginger, no doubt. LeBron or Jordan? Jordan. Run DMC or Beastie Boys? Well, that'd be a hell of a concert. Uh, I'm going with Beastie Boys. Bengals or Reds? Come on. Cincinnati Bengals. Pac-Man or Galaga? Pac-Man has a lot of variations. You go Miss Pac-Man, you go Baby Pac-Man, um, but uh, you can't sleep on my Galaga skills. I'm going Galaga. Really? Yeah, really. Okay. Got one in my basement if you want to see the high score. Okay, all right. Finally, finish this sentence for me, Chris. When it's all said and done, Chris Mack was... Dead? Uh, a good dad. A good dad, a, um, a guy that, um, you know, worked hard to, to elevate Xavier basketball and hopefully get it to its uh, first Final Four and play for a national championship. But at the end of the day, uh, I want to be remembered as a, as a good father and a good husband. You're off the record. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Thank you.